Hi there. In this video, I'll be showing you how to analyze a graph in physics. In physics, when we do experimental work, we collect our data and then we'll often be plotting a graph so that we can then use the graph to determine the value of a quantity of interest. So how do you actually go about doing that? How do you analyze a graph? What do we mean by that? So I'm going to explain the method to you of how you analyze a graph in general terms, and then we'll do three examples with real, real equations and real graphs so that you can see exactly how it plays out in reality. Okay, so in physics, we will often be plotting a straight line graph. And as you know, on a straight line graph like this, you've got your y-axis and you've got your x-axis. The general equation for a straight line graph is y equals mx plus c. We'll know that from maths already. And like I said, with, with an, when you do experimental work in physics, you have an equation that's associated with that experiment. And so what we do, and what we mean by analyze a graph, is compare the equation that you were given with y equals mx plus c to establish what the gradient is equal to and what the y-intercept is equal to. So we've got y equals mx plus c, okay? You'll have an equation. One of the variables or some product of a, a variable will be plotted on the y-axis and another will be plotted on the x-axis. And so that tells you what the y variable is and what the x variable is. And from that, you can then work out, well, whatever is multiplied by the x variable is equal to your gradient. And then whatever's added or subtracted is equal to your y-intercept. That's the general method then. So let's look at some examples of this so that it becomes really clear to you what, we, what I actually mean by that and what it looks like in reality. We have three equations and they'll be getting increasingly complex as we go through the examples. Let's go to the first example. So this was an experiment to determine the acceleration of freefall, g. Okay, uh, so the equation related to the experiment was v squared equals 2gh. And this is the graph that was plotted with it. Okay, so on this graph we had to plot h along the x-axis and v squared along the y-axis. So we're going to use that knowledge to analyse this graph. So here's our equation. I've written the equation down here again so that you can, so I've got some space to work out there. And I said we need to compare that equation to y equals mx plus c. So what you can do is just write y equals mx plus c in parallel to the equation you were given. This usually works perfectly well, uh, but with more complex equations it might be a little harder to see. And I'll show you what you can do in that case when we do the more complex examples. Okay, so uh, what we need to do first is look at our graph, see what's plotted on the y-axis, what's plotted on the x-axis. So like we said, we had h on the x-axis and v squared on the y-axis. So what that tells me is that my y variable from y equals mx plus c is v squared. So I'm just going to circle those. And my x variable is h because it's on the x-axis. So I circle those as well. So I've identified y and x now. Everything that is multiplied by h is equal to the gradient. In that case, it's 2g. Okay, so what, what I always say to my students is, write down, down here what the gradient is equal to. So I'm going to write gradient is equal to 2g. Okay, we'll do something more with that in a moment, but for now, that's what we do. And then we can identify that whatever's added or subtracted here is equal to the y-intercept. Well, we've got zero, haven't we? This is like plus zero there. So the y-intercept is zero. The theoretical one is anyway. Okay, so we can write that down also. Y-intercept equals zero. Okay, uh, so with this, if you remember, I said that this was an experiment where we wanted to determine the value of g. So in order to do that, we need to rearrange this equation. We've now related the gradient to 2g. So you work out the gradient of your graph, and then we're going to need to rearrange this so that g is the subject, 
G will equal the gradient divided by 2. So you work out the value of your gradient, substitute it in here, and it will be equal to the gradient divided by 2. That will give you the value of G. Okay, so hopefully that makes the general concept a little clearer, having seen a real equation and what we need to do with that. Let's look at another example. Here's equation two. This equation and this experiment was about determining the value of resistivity of a metal wire. It doesn't matter too much if you don't know what these things are, if you haven't come across them. As long as you can, you're comfortable with algebra, you'll understand what we're doing in analyzing the graph. Okay, so our equation is R equals rho L over A. We're going to do exactly the same procedure. We're going to look at what's on the y-axis, what's on the x-axis, so that we can identify y and x from y equals mx plus c. Okay, so here's our equation, uh, here's our graph, sorry. We've got resistance R on the y-axis, and we've got L on the x-axis. So R is our Y variable and L is the X variable. What you might find it helpful to do here, particularly where you have divisions involved, to make it really clear what's what, you might find it helpful to separate out all of the terms and then the X variable to the side. So let me show you what I mean by that. We're gonna take the L beside this, so it'll be L multiplied by everything, all the other terms. In order to keep it the same, that would be resistivity divided by A in brackets multiplied by L. Let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so those two equations are absolutely identical. I've just separated out the rho and A terms so it's really clear what's what. And that makes it easier when we write out Y equals MX plus C in parallel to identify which is which variable. So let's do that. Okay, so we said that R was on the y-axis and then it's therefore the y variable. L was our x variable. So those two are identified. Everything that's multiplied by the x variable is equal to the gradient. So that's rho over A. And once again, we have a y-intercept of zero. So let's write down what we have over here. Gradient is equal to rho over A. As I said before, in this experiment, you'd be interested to find out the resistivity, rho. So if we rearrange this, we get rho equals the gradient multiplied by A. So you would measure the cross-sectional area of your wire, multiply it by the gradient that you measure from your graph, and that will give you the resistivity. That's example two. Let's look at example three, which is a little more complex. Here we go, equation three. Okay, so this was about moments. It's an experiment to determine the value of M and the value of R in this equation. So everything else would be known. So you can see there's quite a lot going on in that equation. It's a good example to work through. Okay. So let's have a look at the graph. Okay. I'll just keep that equation visible. Right, so on the y-axis we have P. Okay, so that's on the left there anyway, that's fine. And then we have WQ, WQ on the x-axis. So let's what we're going to do is we're going to separate out this term here. So we have WQ multiplied by 1 over mg so that we can see what the gradient is equal to more easily. Let's do that. Okay, so here's our equation. I'm just gonna note down the y and x variables to the side over here, just so we remember what was what. So y equals p and x equals wq. Okay, so let's separate out these terms. So that would be p equals 1 over mg times wq plus 0.2 r over m. So that's our equation. Now we can write down y equals mx plus c in parallel and then analyze it. OK. 
Okay. So y is p, x is wq, and then the gradient is equal to 1 over mg, and the y-intercept is 0.2 r over m. Let's write those down. By the way, you notice I often write G-R-A-D, so short for gradient abbreviation, and not M. The reason for that is sometimes you have equations that have a lowercase m in, so I'm trying to keep it clear what the gradient is and separating it from anything else. Also, you might have variables lowercase c, so y-intercept makes it clear what's what. Okay, so like I said, we would want to determine a value for m. We would need to use the gradient first. You see m occurs in both of these, but since r is an unknown as well, we couldn't use this equation first. So work out your gradient and then substitute it in here, rearrange for m. So that equation would look like this. So m equals 1 over g times the gradient, and then once you've got that value of m, you can use it over here. Therefore, we rearrange this equation for r. Let's put that up a bit. Okay, so r would be equal to the y-intercept multiplied by m divided by 0.2. So hopefully that makes the method really clear and hopefully seeing those examples has really consolidated it for you. Um, if you found this helpful, then give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Tell me why in the comments. And I will be doing a follow-up video to this where I look at log graphs. So if you're in year two physics, you'll need to plot log graphs and analyze those. So there's some extra steps there. And I'll show you how to do that in video two. This document is available on the website, so you can download and get some practice if you like. It's always a good idea to get as much practice as you can in physics. That is the key to success.